This is my 2022 Jayco Jayfeather Micro 166 FBS. It's an all train boondocking camper. And this is my 2022 TRD off road forerunner. Had a couple issues with trailer wiring on the forerunner and getting connected up to the Jayco. Uh, where the trailer wiring originally is on the runner is hard to get to. I searched everywhere and couldn't find a good solution and I ended up finding a really great easy solution that I'm going to talk about in this video. Also I installed the Red Arc trailer brake controller and it works great as well. So I just wanted to run through it with you. Hopefully it helps somebody. I'll explain what the problem was and what I did to solve it. The issue starts with being able to get the trailer wiring to where it needs to go. Now this is where the trailer wiring is now, but here is where the trailer wiring was before. The beauty of this bracket from Amazon, which I'll put a link in the description. Uh, you can go by there and purchase it, and I put an affiliate link, is that this bracket is just an aftermarket bracket that your plug here connects into simply with the brackets that are on the plug. And so literally, it's just a hole and two screws. And it comes with two self-tapping screws. This is one of the screws it comes with here okay but you're going to take this out of here using those two clips okay and after you have this installed you're going to just bring this over here slip it in and literally just let it clip into place like that and then you have this plug here okay and just like most plugs it's got a push tab right here you can see where it's uh, shaped differently you push down and you have to kind of wiggle it off, but you see how that this meets up with this, just like any other plug, and listen, it'll clip. Well, I say that, it did not make an audible click, but it is stuck, it's not going anywhere, it's clicked past the point there. But you don't have to mess with these, you don't have to mess with this. All of this is the factory wiring. Just take the tape off, unravel it, unloop it, and it will extend out to here. This factory bracket here, I believe you can take off. I don't really see any other purpose for it, um, but this is a rounded edge here, so, and these really aren't touching that rounded edge, so I wouldn't really be worried about it. And if you wanted to put a wire loom or wrap this up with some electrical tape, that would protect it even more. But, so this bolt here is actually a Toyota bolt. Okay, it's in there, it goes into this big bracket here, and it holds in place the plastics of the bumper. So this bolt has a little bit of a shank on it. It's a little bit wider uh, than the actual threads, uh, right back toward the washer, okay? You have to drill this bracket out, this bracket here, a little bit to get that shank to go through there so that it'll get flush up against the washer and you know tighten down into the threads um, but just get you drill and drill that out I can't remember the size but it's not that big a deal to find out all right the other bolt I'm gonna show you that's the self tapping screw bolt whatever that come with this Hopkins bracket so here is the self tapping screw a um, couple things here I rotated this bracket this way so that it would point more toward the tongue of the trailer and also it gets the connector a little further away from the spare tire. But when you have this wire connector off and you have this uh, connector plug out, then you can get to this real easily and you just want to find a place. I'll put some light on this bracket that it's actually screwed into uh, in just a second so you can see. But you just put your impact on there and just it'll self tap right through it wasn't a problem all right so that's a lot better you can really see now so you can see that self tap screw went right up through there 
you can see this bolt over here goes into this bracket and that gave me enough room this bracket comes down right there let's see okay and so I just had to angle this to where the hole that's already in it you can see it has some adjustability there and I could get that screw in there just right and it wasn't really touching the plastic bumper um, and just screw it in there so that's the solution and you can notice here this just slides out you'll have to slide it out to have enough room to do what you need to do there's a another harness on top you may have to take out you don't have to take this out I had done that which is why it's loose I put it back in you don't have to do that I did that when I was trying to figure out what to do but this will work it's there it goes so you can take that out and down do what you have to do I couldn't get this one back into the bracket but that's okay because it's on top so just get this one back in the bracket it'll hold the other one where it needs to be let me look here there we go clicks into place you have enough wiring it's not in any way shape or form in any place that it'll hit rub or cause problems I was gonna tape this up I just haven't done it yet I don't think it's really necessary honestly and you've got more than enough room to drop this if I have to drop my spare I'm probably gonna try to be careful and maybe hold it as I guide it but honestly it's about two inches from hitting so it should be easy to do I'll just kind of guide it with the left hand as I crank the post with the right hand but I'm gonna take us back up top now and just kind of take a look at how easy it is now to walk up and install your trailer wiring here instead of having to squat down look under the bumper and hook into here so I'll see you up top all we have to do is get our wiring and we're easily accessible right under the bumper and you can easily see what you're trying to plug into all right so I've got us in position you can see here now all I have to do I can clear see just squatted down what I'm working with put it right in get it connected and there it goes nice and easy I've got a lot of extra play here with my natural wiring and you can see I'm far away that's to give my distribution hitch room that's what I'm trying to demonstrate for you there I actually went with the way safe distribution hitch because this camper is dry 4100 pounds so I'm probably looking at 45, 4,600 pounds. My tongue weight is right at 500 pounds. So I'm almost maxing out this vehicle and I wanted to make sure that it was completely distributed correctly as precise as needed. So, but you've got your seven pin trailer there. You've got your four pin here. You've got everything you need. It's just right here under the bumper where you can see it to connect it. So. I mean, I am completely happy with that. It fixed the problem, and the, honestly, this is probably where they should have put it to begin with. Now, as far as off-roaders are concerned, I'll get you a different angle and show the level of this. The angle of this is slightly lower than the hitch, but the hitch comes back further. So if you're coming off of something, <clears throat> unless you have something on this area that you're going to hit which you're only two inches from your bumper at that point anyway but this should probably take it up for you and if you leave one of these in or something like one of the skids um, it should be pretty good if you're off-roading that extreme then you're probably not worried about this anyway but as far as a regular trailering solution this really did it all right, so going in here to the Forerunner, this is the location for the Red Arc brake controller. You can get the switch housing here from Red Arc, and then the controller here. And it's real easy to see from the seat. 
there's a great how-to video on eTrailer.com to show you how to install into this position. Everybody's height and everything's going to be a little bit different, but this is basically how it is for me. And you'll see down here to the side, uh, you can clearly see the brake controller. Now, one of those extra switches to the left, they're a little harder to see when you're behind the steering wheel. Uh, the switches to the right are the same way. I did consider putting it down here into the console, but after sitting in the vehicle and looking around, um, you can kind of choose where you want to put it, but definitely down here was the best spot for me. You follow the instructions and videos on YouTube on how to install and um, calibrate it. Now I will tell you that you're really going to need a good piece of road that you can go really slowly for, I had to go about a quarter to a half a mile before it really calibrated in, okay? You can manually push it to turn it on. It has LED lights to tell you where, you're, where you have it adjusted. Um, I prefer it in the automatic mode. Once it calibrated, it seems to work really smoothly um, and anticipate, and it's a gradual pressure, so I really like that. Uh, towing this 4,100 pound camper, 4,100 plus pound camper, it actually works really well. Well, folks, that's everything I said I was going to go through. I hope it helps some of you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, it was a really simple solution. The red arc took some time to get in. You have to pull some panels, but the instruction videos walk you through it. It really wasn't that difficult. And um, all in all, it makes everything a lot simpler once finished. Again, if you have any questions or anything, just ask. All right, take care.